Hey everybody, this is Leon and in this video I'm going to show you how to use the NPM module Express Data Fire. So what is this? This is actually a very tiny Express server running the Data Fire engine along with some tools. So before getting straight into it, um, you can use it as application or as middleware. Um, but first let me explain to you what is Datafire. So first of all you have to uh, understand that Datafire is a really cool platform um, which in, in, my, in my own words I would call it um, Google Apps Scripts uh, done right because they use you can use ES6 um, but not only that you can also use ES6 uh, to glue together all kinds of uh, integrations. You can think like uh, Twitter, Gmail, uh, Google Spreadsheets, uh, Amazon services, like all these things you can wire really easily together using uh, a teaspoon of ES6 JavaScript or just with a few clicks. So this is a really cool platform where you can just run all your data flows, that's how they call it, uh, in the cloud. So think of it like if this then that using ES6 JavaScript. It's really cool. So having that said, um, sometimes it's handy to um, run something on, a, on your own server, your home server, or just your laptop when you're prototyping something offline. And that's uh, actually why this this kind of small brother was uh, was made. This is an experimental um, express server which allows you to uh, code in your browser and set up some endpoints and uh, run data fire uh, code. So um, having that said, um, what I also like about data fire is that it really focuses on um, integration. So for example, Cloud Boost or Hook.io or uh, Lambda Functions or Google Cloud Code. Super nice. I, I really, I'm really feeling this serverless or function as a service uh, thing. But um, yeah, what still annoys me is that I'm still um, downloading stuff from NPM, API clients and all that. And uh, I'm doing that over and over and over again. And Datafire gets that and uh, gives you like more than 350 uh, integrations, so which you can reuse and not have to install or anything. So this is this is what I think um, kind of like an NPM for integrations. Uh, it, it makes integrations very portable. So. Uh, Enough uh, with this commercial. I, I'm actually not affiliated with Datafire in any way. I'm just a, a fan. So let's uh, let's get some code done. Um, of course, you have to clone it, and then you have to do a npm install, and then by default you'll get the Datafire uh, engine, uh, which is um, which has a really awesome command line uh, utility. But let's not do that. Uh, let's just serve the express server. And then I'll show you why this is super um, handy to, to use as a, as a serverless, server hassle-free uh, tool. So imagine you just install this on your Raspberry Pi, uh, which is online somewhere in the network or just on your laptop and you just want to create an endpoint. So this is super easy. We'll just copy the uh, hello world um, endpoint. Let's go back and then we'll just create a new file.js. There it is. Then we will just do A, a copy paste or the paste actually so one thing to note is that Datafire expects 
actions and the way the, the reason why I really like actions because it makes data fire code very very portable like express endpoints they are kind of portable but they um, they're not like like this an, an action um, really uh, allows you to specify what is the input of this action so uh, in this case we want a name or let's say we want a username and this is the handler this is the actual code which al always returns a promise so we can do async stuff and we can uh, we can do a console here and we can reference that username like so as well as in our response we can do it like that um, also we can just do this let's say I want to have underscore when I press control save it will automatically download this module so this is this is something which is really nice uh, to have because obviously you cannot run every experimental npm module in the cloud so the last step what we need to do so we have our data fire code or action uh, is we'll just reference the um, the code here just create an endpoint using get or we can, let's make it post then we'll just enter test file here and looky here this is actually where you can define cron jobs so this is actually everything what I've ever uh, desired from Google App Script but never happened so let's save this as well control s and let's get back to our swagger interface and let's press press refresh there we go nothing happened maybe I it's still downloading the um, the module let's see did I save it correctly test post action test file oh new file excuse me Control S, save. Let's see if everything is okay now. Boom, there it is. So, what we have here is a new endpoint. And as you can see here, you see our username. We can try it out by uh, foobar. And we can execute it. And boom, there you go, hello wordy, foobar. So this is pretty cool, you can just prototype endpoints and or as you could see also tasks, here you can see hello foobar. So this is pretty cool. Uh, this is a task, so if, if we would put a new file here, then it will run the code every minute so that is a uh, pretty cool I'm not gonna save this um, there is other cool stuff as well but um, I'm not gonna um, cover this in this video um, I'm gonna cover that in the uh, next videos so yeah this is a introduction video of the uh, data fire express package uh, if you have any questions just um, contact me on uh, github and uh, we'll figure it out and also bear in mind this is an experimental npm package also what is pretty handy is that you can always uh, export all your um, yeah all your endpoints and your configuration so you can always 
reuse it on Datafire. So, I'm going to wrap up. Um, so, yeah, see you in the next video. Thanks.